in the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Welcome to Islam for Dummies. Today, we will be talking about the remarkable correlations between the scientific properties of iron and the mention of iron in the Quran. First, we will compare the Quranic chapter named the iron with the scientific evidence about iron. Let's watch how the earth was formed. The early planet was probably only a tenth of the size that it is today. Where today the four inner planets orbit, four and a half billion years ago were scores of smaller planets orbiting the sun. Orbits of some were drawn by gravitational force towards each other. Encounters of awesome magnitude were unavoidable. The force and heat of those collisions melted the rock, but gravity would hold the two together and then weld them into one. With each collision, the planet would grow larger. And the last impact, four and a half billion years ago, would have a profound effect upon our world. The giant body crashed into the center of the planet and gave Earth its iron core. وأنزلنا الحديد فيه بأس شديد. And the fourth verse from this same chapter, which is named the iron, confirms the literal interpretation of the iron being physically sent down. He knows what enters into the earth and what comes out from it and what comes down from the sky, and what ascends therein. Not only does the Quran state the fact that iron was sent down, but, remarkably, the iron chapter is in the center of the Quran as chapter 57 of 114, just like the iron core is in the center of the earth. Let's watch another demonstration. At the Earth's center is a massive ball of iron, known as the core. An outer core of molten iron swirls around it. Four point six billion years ago, a continual rain of meteorites pounded the molten Earth. Each strike brought with it more rock, making our planet bigger and scattering metals over the surface. Then, a giant asteroid struck. Its massive iron core didn't stop on the surface. It sank towards the center. Ronald Merman explains the benefits of Earth's siren core in his book, Our Almost Impossible Universe. Iron is the main element of the core of the Earth. The Earth has a magnetic field at best difficult if there was little iron. It has many effects. One is to keep cosmic rays and the solar wind from hitting the earth destroying life. He also explains the benefits and strength of iron. We exist because of properties of iron and of physical laws that give it the greatest binding energy, the most tightly bound of all nuclei. Our earth has iron. A suitable amount, not too little, not too much. Furthermore, iron is a vital constituent of plant and animal life and works as an oxygen carrier in hemoglobin. As a result, while all metals are formed in space, 
The Quran correctly emphasizes the strength and benefits of iron, whose unique properties are essential for life on earth. Second, we will examine four of the astonishing numerical codes in the iron chapter of the Quran. Number one, the numerical abjad value of this chapter's title, Al Hadid, is 57. which matches its chapter number in the center of the Quran, like the iron in the center of the earth. Number 2. The numerical abjad value of the word iron, Hadid, is 26, which is iron's atomic number or its number of protons. When we count the Basmala, which is the opening verse, considered by many scholars to be a numbered verse, we get Number 3. The 25th verse stating that the iron was sent down, increases to 26, which again coincides with iron's atomic number. And also, Number 4. The chapter's total 29 verses increase to 30 which is the number of neutrons in iron's most abundant isotope, Fe56. In summary, the Quran contains stunning numerical codes for the iron chapter in the center of the Quran, like the iron in the Earth's core, iron's atomic number in two instances, and the number of neutrons in iron's most abundant isotope. Third, we will examine the false claims of people trying to refute this verse. Opponents of Islam claim that the unearthly origin of all iron was common knowledge in the 7th century, but this is a fabrication. The dominant scientific views in the 7th century belonged to the Greeks, whose philosophy favored an eternal universe in which everything, including the elements on earth, always existed. More importantly, the dominant Greek belief was that all matter is composed of four elements, air, earth, fire, and water. The Greek concept of an element was accepted for nearly 2,000 years. This included Arab chemists, whose work was based on these four elements, and especially Aristotle's idea that one kind of matter could be changed into another. Now, let's listen to two people attempting to refute this verse. Meteorites were known to contain iron four and a half thousand years before the Quran. In fact, the knowledge is so old it can't even be claimed as a scientific discovery, as it was made long before the birth of science. As we saw earlier, the dominant view was that, of the Greeks, that all matter formed on earth, from the four elements. Furthermore, this false statement is an insult to pioneering scientists like Fred Hoyle, who was the first to theorize, in 1946, that collections of very hot nuclei in stars can assemble into iron. Let's hear another objection. It was common knowledge that meteors containing iron fell to earth from space. The ancient Egyptian word for iron was metal of heaven. But contrary to this claim, it is actually the minority view among scholars that meteoric iron accounted for the main iron use of ancient Egypt, according to GizaPyramid.com, which also states Forbes said that meteoric iron could never be a great factor in the rise of metallurgy. More scholars today tend to agree with Forbes. The fact is, while a few pre-Iron Age societies did use traces of meteoric iron, all Iron Age societies extracted their iron from ore, which are rocks and minerals, coming from the earth itself. As a result, the Quran states that the iron was sent down, long before this was scientifically proven, at a time when people thought that iron was formed on earth, from the four elements. In conclusion, 
The Kodoran highlights Siren as being sent down because of its great strength and benefits to mankind, as the verse states. Life on Earth would be nearly impossible without the iron core, the scientific properties of iron itself, and the precise amount of iron in the Earth. The sheer magnitude and manner in which iron came down to form the Earth's core cannot be compared to any other element whatsoever. Appropriately, the Koran dedicates its center chapter to iron. Those trying to refute this verse have successfully demonstrated their own ignorance about the significance of iron to all life on earth and about both the ancient views and the modern discoveries of the formation of elements. We sincerely hope you enjoyed this episode of Islam for Dummies and we hope to see you again next time.